it's hard to get you to believe me, but I just want you to know that if you're ever feeling down or depressed, and you just feel like everything's wrong with your life and you want it to stop, just know that there are people there for you, whether you're aware of it or not. It's a really hard time for you, but I promise you, it takes time and a little bit of effort. I know you won't believe me at first, but you just have to have a little bit of faith and a little bit of hope. If you're listening to this, just know that I believe in you. Dark River Dieworks P6. I could say welcome to a frigid Laurel Creek. Um, it's August, which is my birthday month. It's my birthday. So I'm caffeinated, I'm medicated, and refrigerated. If this is the first time that you've seen this podcast, Thank you very much for stopping in. Um, if you like what you see, please like and subscribe. Tell your friends. Whatever. Have fun doing it. <laughs> there you go. I really should write down what this podcast is about. Because every time I say it, it seems to be different. Knitting. Fibre related things, be that spinning or dyeing or eco dyeing, eco printing, that sort of thing. Um, have I said knitting? <laughs> Painting, drawing, art, machine knitting. I have this layout in my head of my studio, and what I'm doing is I'm going around each of the stations that I have in my studio to see if I've covered everything. Ah, whatever. Um, it's been really cold here. I think it, no, I don't think it's, it's, it's definitely snowing in Armadale, which is from here up the hill. Everything from here seems to be up the hill. Um, and all that cold air is falling down the hill to us. It's the windy season. It's August. Um, we're batting the hatches. Where we live is in a a bowl, and um, you can hear the wind rushing down the hill. So you get get at least uh, a minute before the wind hits to secure everything. So welcome. That's a bit rambling, isn't it? A minute wind. There we go. Um, welcome to Dark River Dye Works, and grab a friend. Grab something fluffy. Oh, look at all the fluff. Ah, dusty. <coughs> <laughs> and yeah, welcome and have some fun. I'll go and open the window. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just the way it goes, I suppose. Does this look a bit weird? I've pulled the curtain now. <laughs> So the light was just a little bit too bright. Um, what I'll start off with is some finished objects. I've been knitting and crocheting mats um, for a friend who is going through a bit of a tough time presently, health-wise. 
and she's in need of some happy coloured hats. Um, so I've crocheted one and knitted three. Um, oh, this one, excuse me. They're all finished. I haven't washed or blocked these yet, so I'll do that today. This first one. Actually, the colour on that one's not too bad. Um, with all of these hats, I haven't actually followed a pattern. What I've done is I've just. Oh, my brain has just said free ball, but I know that's. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm wearing underwear. <laughs> oh my god. Um, Three last. I did, I made it up. Okay. Um, this one is out of my hand dyed, um, super wash merino, uh, four point five millimeter needle, and oh god, I'm saying it's it's a hot more of a close fitting. It's really, really, really soft. Um, so hopefully it will be okay. Yeah, I will wash and block because I'm not going to send something down to her full of my hair. <laughs> <laughs> this one um, has been hill double. Uh, it was a, the hot pink and the red. It's a an acrylic cotton blend and held double with I think it's a cotton cotton silk. All this white uh, and pink variegation all the way through it is um, the cotton silk blend. And, uh, yeah, again, it's really soft. Um, knitted on probably my standard. 4.5 yeah about a 4.5 millimeter millimeter hook a little bit looser than the last one but yeah and the decreases yeah um, it's not so much of a a domed decrease it's more of a flat flathead <laughs> Now this one here is a a beret, and again with the decreases because I'm making it up as I go along. I, I don't know if you can see. Is it? It's counting. It's mathematics. Numbers. Um, I'll work it out two or three times. Go, yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, got it, got it. By the time I actually do it, it's wrong. Um, and I don't know. So I just, on the fly. It worked out. It's still flat. It's still very shaped, I suppose. Um, yeah. Four colours. You want to be aware of berets? I don't Is it wrong? Oh. <laughs> Is it? Now you, I don't know. No idea. But, is that, no, that's not the time I'm here for. I wore a beret when I was in Browns and I looked like not a normal person. Um, this one here is crocheted with, I think it's a red heart super saver. 
happy with that. I bought this um, colour to knit the uh, beanie and beret for the knitting nanas. I think I may have mentioned that in the first podcast. The knitting nanas are a bunch of knitters, nanas who knit, um, and they'll go out and they'll protest for environmental causes and that sort of thing. Um, and be so joy them to me. So, single crochet, uh, probably a four millimeter hook, um, single crochet all the way through with a crab stitch, um, I've gone all the way up to the, it's acrylic, it's fine, um, start from the bottom, work up, decrease your crown, then come back and do crab stitch around the edge there. So it finishes it off and makes it look a little bit better. Is that even wrong? I don't like my glasses. So there's my uh, my happy hats. I've slipped a bit. Ooh. For my, for my next trick, <laughs> for my next finish object, I have some um, botanical dye. I have, yay, yay! The two different dye lots, and well, actually. These two um, are eucalyptus something something. <laughs> Hold that thought. I have this in my die already. Oh. Identifying the eucalypts that we have, I have. Identified maybe 20 different types of eucalypt just on this property, and um, it's not that easy. Some of them look really similar. Um, these two are rough barked apple. No, I'm lying to you. Them all on the floor. These two are rough barked apple. Engophora floribunda or woodsiana. I think that's how you pronounce it. Engophora. I couldn't tell whether it's floribunda or woodsiana. You're supposed to look at the flowers and the fruits, and it's way up in the canopy, so I, I couldn't do that. Um, they're not mordanted. Um, this one, the, the paler one, this one is a single die, so I've just put it in, um, stick some leaves overnight and put in, strain it off and put it in the dye bath uh, once and let that um, simmer for about an hour and then took it outside and let it steep and cool down overnight. And that was just the once. This one here, I did the same thing, but I put it in the dye bath twice to get a, a deeper um, shade. It's more of a, a coffee, coffee latte sort of, yeah, one's definitely darker than the other. Yeah, yeah. See the different shades. Um, this one here was done with a not a flooded gum, a forest red eucalyptus, erectricornis, cornus. 
So, and I did likewise. This one here, the paler one, um, a single dye bath, and the darker one, a double dye bath. Now they're very similar, but the uh, retrocornus is has a slightly golder, golder, goldier, yellow um, tone to it. Um, and it's slightly. That's what you're looking at. So what I've got happening is I go from darkest. This one to the yellow. Yeah, can I do it? Going from dark to really high. I know these two inlays look similar, but believe me, there is a difference in the tone. You can sort of see it there. Not quite as well. Um, this one. Oh, there's a, this one. This one here is definitely the palest. And that one. There you can see there's a very, very, it sort of blows out a bit. Anyway, um, it's a very subtle gradient happening. <sighs> so what I need is something that's a lot darker to almost white. And I have, gee whiz, a jumpers quantity. That could be a hundred gram skeins of about a hundred and two hundred and it's a light deep layer of sport weight, so I end up having um, a sweater, sweater, jumper work, party, party work, or a large shawl. In it's super wash, hundred percent super wash merino, and it's my test batch of um, yarn because I've. Not one hundred percent. There we go. Um, I was given a cone, a kilogram cone of uh, machine knitting. Now you can see that there. That's one thread, and I've plied it up six times to get it to uh, the, the size that it is. So I've got a deep. Um, it's really, really soft. Um, it really is soft. Sits right. Um, dyed plants from their property. Um, so what I'll, it, I've got Thank you, Tammy. Did you hear a belly growl as she went past? <laughs> Excuse me, keep going. Um, where was I? <laughs> oh, bases. I have um, MCN, Merino, Cashmere, and Nylon in a sock. I have a. Uh, uh, oh, God. It's. Yeah. Um, MCN. Um, I have an, an a cashmere. No, that's the MCN. Oh, for God's sake! <laughs> Why? Why? Oh, I don't know. Yes, they can. Um, I have four different bases at the moment. Oi! 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 <sighs> Cats climbing on things, trying to push behind things and knocking lamps over. Yeah. Disaster averted. Until next time. Anyway.
I have faces that I have to knit, knit up. Oh my god. Give me a break. <sighs> Next, I'll have, I'll show you, a, just jump into works in progress. Yep, excuse the crinkling. I asked Felix um, to make me some drop spindles. Now, I've never used a drop spindle. No, I lie. When I worked at a place called Old Sydney Town, um, I was given a lump of um, raw fleece and a drop spindle and a couple of hand carters to walk around the town and pick up a, or pick a spot and just sit and spin because in colonial times this is maybe what they would have done. I don't know. But um, I couldn't manage it then. <laughs> so I just walked around insulting people. Um, and I really can't manage it now. <laughs> no, I'll lie. I'll, let, I'll do this and end up hitting myself in the head with it. Um, I, 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 since I've learnt to spin on my wheels, I know now what to look for and what to do. But um, this, I now know why they're called drop spindles. The sound of wood hitting the floor echoed throughout the room. Um, that's just my inadequacies using these. But my husband made these up, and this is hickory wattle made from, again, wood from our property. And um, it was written on the side just in case I forget what it is. Hickory wattle. And oh, it's really pretty. So he's looking at um, refining the spindles. I think for me this um, shaft is just a little bit too long. Um, and the we couldn't find a smaller um, it's just a little bit too big, so I'm trying to source some smaller, um, I think they're flyer hooks from spinning wheels, I'm trying to find some of those, they're not that easy to find in Australia, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I've had a test on, it works, my spinning, as you can see this was my first attempt, it's not too bad. Uh, it's not, I wouldn't say that's overspun. It just twists around itself quite nicely. Um, it's just me not dropping it quite so often. For every length of yarn that I get, I've dropped it about half a dozen times. <laughs> so he's going to um, refine his technique in making these and um, he'll put them up for sale. For not a lot. Now that's that one. This one here, um, excuse the... Uh, Is the other one that I asked him to make and this one I think for me worked a lot better. Don't know I think the hickory wattle is quite a dense wood so it's a little bit heavier and this one is a pretty peach. Now we have wild peaches growing around. They're feral and this was alongside the road and the wind got to it and broke a piece out of it. And when we cut the when he cut the wood up, uh, found out there was quite attractive timber. So um, he's saved it and the branch I've asked him to make some more 
top spindles and uh, this one just stick my pencil in the bottom because it's slightly thicker but I wonder oh and the end of the end of it is the is a, a crochet hook and I much prefer this type of hook at the end than the cup hook. Uh, for me it works a lot better. So and that's a foray into drop spindle. He's looked at making some Turkish spindles and um, top top whirl whirl spindles. So making them obviously the top and these are bottom wool and the fiber that I've been um, using um, is use the crinkling this I've, I've stripped up into what do they call it pencil roving um, from felting you now I've been buying this through Etsy from felting their felting you.com Hand painted 100 gram merino uh, roving 21.5 micron. It's a little bit um, toothy, but I don't mind. It's fabulous. Um, so, this has been my favorite shop for, for buying fiber of the uh, the recent weeks. Um, yeah, fully recommend felting you. Um, through Etsy. Ah, next! And very much a work in progress. This is the wood, I'm going to say the wood warrior from Pom Pom. I've got, uh, I think where I was up to last time, I had just separated the sleeves. So this is. Um, 100% merino vintage yarn, and now I'm part way down the body, and I've just moved my um, progress keep keeper. I've um, whew, not so much, so yay. Coming along, I may be able to wear this next winter. <laughs> still have yet to do the sleeve. Um, I took a break from that to do the hats. And oh here we go. Not really fibery but it's excuse me. This is what I've been working on in between doing other things. Um Making stitch markers. And I'll be making these little cuties. Now I need a lot of stitch markers to keep place because me and mathematics and keeping track of things and or stitch counters, I have to remember to actually twist the number and I don't do that. I just go around. So I need place keepers and progress keepers and stitch markers and that sort of thing. So there's that one, which is a glass bead. I'm just stuck on my thumbnail. Okay. That one, cutie. Butterflies and flowers. I'm expressing my inner hippie. Okay. A couple of flowers. Maybe. Butterflies, the embodiment. A change. There we go. It's so not very nice. And what I've done is I've just written wrong side. I have a problem differentiating the wrong side from the right side. So wrong side in red, right side in green. <laughs> I wonder if that's more of the same. So red and green, right side, wrong side to keep me on track. So I do have an Etsy store. It's it's 
there, but there's nothing in there as yet. So what I'll be doing is I'll be putting um, putting the fibre in, the wool, dyed wool, eco dyed and solar dyed, and I have some silk scarves. Oh, silk scarf. When I did the when I did these, um, I threw in a silk scarf. It's about 180 centimetres long by 30 centimetres wide or something like that. Um, 100%, excuse me, 100 percent silk. And I didn't do anything to it. I just chucked it in. And now it looks like I've spilt tea on it. Um, I, I didn't soak it. I didn't morden it. Um, so it's through my piss poor preparation. Um, I didn't get a, a good result. I have other scarves um, on order that now I know to pre-wash and to pre-soak and probably use some mordant on it and I'll get a better result. <laughs> when I've got those, um, that technique down Pat, I'll put those in the Etsy store as well. Um, there's some silk uh, wraps as well that I've got coming, and I've also got some wool 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 blend um, wool silk wraps coming. Um, so I'll be um, dyeing those with botanicals that we grow on the property. Um, what else is there? Oh, the stitch markers. So I'll have stitch markers and progress keepers. Felix's um, drop spindles, the wool. Oh, and I've got um, merino top, so some spinning um, fibre that will be also in the Etsy store. Um, so stay tuned and I'll let the world know when that's ready. Now I've got, I'm in a bit, bit of a quandary. I want to cast on another, yet another cardi, um, and I've found that I have. I'm just looking, keep looking at it there. It's it's screaming at me. Um, a whole stash of marina, and I want to cast on, and it's my birthday, so I'm going to cast on what I want. But I just don't know what. <laughs> so, I think I got it quite cheaply. This is not an acquisition, it's a deep stash dive. Four seasons, pure wool, eight ply. In, um, it's like a royal dark royal blue that's I have a jumpers quantity in that I also have dragging this out enough a different type this is four seasons pure wool eight ply 100 percent Australian wool in 50 gram pots another sweaters sweaters jumpers quantity in that and that looks like I was putting in some sort of color wall. Now this is the base, the main color that I've got. I have a lot of this and a whole lot of blues. Ooh, that's a red. And I'm back. Not that you'd know that I went anywhere except I've suddenly changed my clothes yet again. No, I haven't changed my clothes. I've just taken my coat off. Most people have a Swiss Army knife. I have a Swiss Army coat, and it's over there. Just a little bit heavy, a bit hot for the moment. Um, what was I talking about? Can you tell me? Can you give me a clue? Uh, tied or spinning? Was it? I think it was. Um, I have been spinning on my wee peggy. I got my wee peggy. Uh, running again, um, I 
received that in exchange for a beanie, which is a pretty good deal, I think. Um, I broke the drive train, the drive band, the drive band on it. Um, it just seemed to be an old piece of string. Um, so I got another piece of uh, cotton string and made a new drive band for it. Um, it was slipping, so what I did was I just hit it with some beeswax. I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do. I did read somewhere in um, like a vintage pamphlet that was online somewhere about maintenance of your um, spinning wheel and that you'd spin up a single um, of yarn and then just use that. Now considering I just use cotton. <laughs> I figured if my drive band had broken I couldn't spin up a single to replace the drive band to start spinning singles again. And I is that just my the way my brains work? I don't I don't know my brains. I've got more than one. Ooh. Um, brain. So I just used a piece of um, cotton from the hardware store and it was slipping for a little bit so I just did it with some beeswax and it's fine. Um, I don't know if that's what you're supposed to do but it's, it's my, it's a lower creek fix. Um, likewise with the, um, was it the scotch tension, little peg on the side that goes up and over spindle um, that was um, it looked like a, a twine of some sort and that broke and also the spring there wasn't a spring on it so what I used was one of my old hair, hair bands and um, tied a knot and it put that on and again I think I used some twine from an old remember when parcels used to come through the post wrapped in brown paper and string or was that really last century that's probably really last century but anyway it's that sort of string I can't remember jute jute twine there you go um so it's just a piece of jute twine with an old hairband yeah it works a treat so there you go um I haven't been spinning I'll put some pictures here of what I was have been spinning. It's the um, merino top from Felting U, um, it's 100% merino, um, that I've been using um, to spin up for the hand spun Kirby that I'm planning. Um, yeah, so that's what I've been doing on the spinning apart from the drop. Drop, drop, lots of drop, drop, lots of drop. Did I say I drop? I dropped it. I dropped it a lot. Um, drop spindles. <laughs> <laughs> this is the part where I say, Hi. I'd like to thank you for spending your time with me. Um, I hope you. Have a good evening, good morning, good afternoon, good day, good weekend, good week, wherever you are. Have a good time. Whatever you do, have fun. Be the best person you can be. And if you want to see the change, be the change. There you go. Bye. This podcast. Vodcast, vod, vodcast. Vod,